So let's just start right into today's episode. We invited a really inspiring team of female founders from our network. Their name is Yezango. And today, Sophia and Larissa are here with me in the podcast studio. For us, entrepreneurship is not necessarily about starting or running a business. It's a state of mind, a principle of life, and an approach to dealing with problems. This is Five, your university podcast on female entrepreneurship by the Munich University of Applied Sciences and the Strasheg Center for Entrepreneurship. We strongly believe in diversity. It's just so much more fun and exciting. Diversity in food, in cultures, in places, ways of living, learning, creating and doing things. It's this desire to explore that we all have in us to see new things. And yes, to be curious to look what's behind the next corner. Hello, everyone, and welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. We start right off with some quiz questions. The facts are from the Female Founders Monitor, a study by Google Startup. Okay, let's go. How high do you think is the percentage of female founders in Germany? 16 percent, 22 or 41? It's 16. Yeah, I also think it's 16. Yeah. You're right. Absolutely <laughs> right. Next question. How high is the percentage of women who found their business to create a positive societal impact? 10 percent, 35 percent or 54 percent? I would say 54. Yeah, I would uh, think so too. You're absolutely right, girls. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> Next question. Uh, what is the average age of founders in Germany? 25, 30 or 35? I think it's 30, maybe. I would say 35. 35. Ah, and oh. that's actually true both for uh, men and women. Oh. oh, okay. Fourth question. How high is the percentage of female founder teams with more than three team members? 6%, 14% or 27%? 6%? Ah, I think so too. Yeah, you're right. Oh, okay. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And the fifth question is, which of the following industries has the highest proportion of female founders? Information and communication technology, medicine and healthcare, consumer goods, textile, nutrition and food, or uh, education or human resources? I think it's consumer goods. I would or say textile. education. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> uh, it's actually medicine and healthcare. Oh, ah. wow. Okay. So first of all, congratulations to the founders of Yesango. Even though you might have never thought about it that way, but yes, you are still quite a rare species in Germany. An all-female startup team of three founders in the field of consumer goods and e-commerce. Yes. And when you look at your website, I mean, there's a lot of female power that swaps over and it's absolutely stunning, I would say. So hello again, Sophia and Larissa from, from Yesango. Um, welcome to our first episode of this podcast. Thanks hello. for inviting us. Yeah, it's so great to be here. <laughs> so one of my first questions would be, I think in one of the videos I, I just saw a poster that you had and there was like a, a nice statement on it like uh, let's create a fair future. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, what I would be interested in is that um, first of all tell us a bit what you're doing with your startup Yesango and then also what does this statement mean exactly for you? Um, so yeah, with uh, Yesango, we want to build a fair fashion hub in Europe. So um, yeah, we want to push the topic of fair fashion and bring consumers who are willing to buy fair fashion and the fair fashion brands together on our platform. Um, yeah, and our big vision is that um, we are involved in pretty much every single piece of um, fair fashion clothing in Europe one day. And um, yeah, the, the statement, let's create a fair future um, is, um, yeah, I would say our, uh, our mission um, because um, as many people know, the clothing industry um, 
suffers under a lot of uh, very bad um, working condition or production conditions. So uh, we want to uh, make fair fashion a standard so that everyone who is involved in producing clothing can live from it and doesn't have to work under very dangerous conditions and doesn't have to fear for uh, their life um, or, um, you know, works a lot of hours every day but can't pay for their whole family. Um, so this is uh, what drives us and um, this is why we created this statement to create the fair future. And is there like a specific reason for why you thought like the fashion industry could be a good industry to make an impact for? Yeah, of course. I mean, the fashion industry is um, the biggest consumer um, industry that's out there. And it's also the second um, largest polluter in the world. So I think it's a very good um, starting point and um, one with a big impact. So that's why we thought, um, yeah, let's start there. And do you have any like personal connection with fashion or like, you mean like, I mean, starting a business, I, I would say is like you, you don't do anything else than like you're daily involved in like what you're doing and have a passion for. Mm -hmm. So um, how that did that uh, evolve? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think we are both very uh, like. I wouldn't say fashionistas, but um, very involved with fashion. So yeah, very interested and passionate yeah, about the yeah. topic. And yeah. yeah, so it's great to um, be surrounded by it every day. So that's also a plus. And yeah, both points together uh, bring this bring this good yeah combination for your zango. Yeah, and maybe second question. Like, I mean, it's probably very interesting to understand for uh, future potential entrepreneurs, um, what brought you uh, to the decision of like starting your own business and like kind of deciding against like a well-paid, uh, maybe a secure job or whatever, like how did that happen? When did you first had this idea in mind of like starting your own business? Like, just tell us a bit about, you know, the insights of becoming an entrepreneur. <laughs> For Sophia and me, it was very similar. So we were both always um, wanted to, um, yeah, to start our own business. For Katya, especially our third co-founder, she was totally not into it. So uh, she was really driven by, by the need she had herself that she wanted to buy fair fashion and didn't have the right access for it. Um, but for Sophia and me, um, yeah, I think we um, developed early on the desire to yeah be our own boss and um, have our own business. So yeah, or can you, Sophia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you say about it? Yeah, but um, how did that you know like how did this become evolved, like a mean? real option for yeah. you? Like. Yeah. My parents are both self-employed and uh, so I knew how it was to have, uh, um, yeah, to run their own business and maybe from them, I don't know, but um, yeah, I don't know. I Yeah, for me, it's actually the same. Um, my parents are also both um, self-employed and I love to see the freedom they have. Also, they are, of course, um, work a lot, but they're very like passionate about it and they love what they do. And I always thought um, that one day I want to have the same. I don't want to be in a job where I just go there every day and think about hopefully the day will gone by very soon. So, um, yeah, that's that's the kind of energy that attracted me early on. And I have to say, until now, it was one of the best decisions because you wake up every day and you feel very happy to go to work and you feel passionate about it. And I love what I do. And it's like such a great feeling. Um, yeah, so. So it's about freedom. Yeah. Uh, passion. Yeah. Making an impact. Yeah. Probably with, with what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. And really building something yourself from nothing um, and you know every day we get so much accomplished and um, when we look back um, yeah I don't know two months ago um, it was totally different and um, two days ago two days ago, <laughs> ago was totally different so yeah it's um, 
Yeah, it's so interesting. And uh, yeah, to really know that you built this and that you can decide where um, the road should take the company. And um, that's, yeah. So you learn so much every day. You're uh, totally engaged in every topic and you have to deal with things you wouldn't deal with in any other uh, position or job. So um, it's actually every day. So last day um, I was looking at paid media ads and I was never involved with marketing before. The day before um, I looked at our revenue numbers and calculated um, car um calculated our average order values and KPIs like that. And it's like you're every day you're like, yeah, learning something new and have to, yeah, get messy and um, yeah. Yeah, I think like what you just said is that like being an entrepreneur is also like ultimately a very creative process, mm -hmm. very pragmatic, hands-on. Like yeah. it's not like... um I mean, you, you have problems or challenges every day yeah. and then it's kind of upon you um, to find solutions for yeah. that. And I mean, one of the skills that usually is connected to being an entrepreneur is also about the having like this courage, confidence, self-efficacy, like in research, self-efficacy is like always a lot related to whether you become an entrepreneur or not. And I mean, this is the big question usually <laughs> in education, like how can we increase the, the self-efficacy of, mm -hmm. of our students, of our um, people attending our courses? Um, is there anything you can think of? Like how, how did you become that way, you know, like um, in, in terms of like courage or was it just that Uh, you, you you had maybe like um, some small um, projects already early in in your career where you felt like oh I achieved that so I could go one step ahead or can you think of anything? So I would say a big part is that I always had an environment um, that always gave me the feeling that I can achieve anything I want to. I think that's a big part. Um, to really have the confidence you can do it if you want it. It's it's hard work, but you can do it. Yeah, I think so too. So that you um, not, uh, I mean, um, so many problems occur every day that you not only see the problems, but uh, think in solutions. I mean, that sounds a bit, I, I don't know, cheap. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a very hard question. Um, I don't know if I think back, maybe um, I saw it with my parents. I mean, they had to deal with a lot of stuff. They never knew what would come the next day with their businesses. Maybe this is something that um, when you see it with, their par uh, with your parents that you see, okay, they can deal with it. There's always a solution, you know, um, yeah, problems come, but you can always find a way. Maybe it's that, but... I can't remember any specific um, projects. I mean, I would have loved to have projects like that in school, for example. I mean, I was always very interested in economics and businesses. Um, and um, I think when um, students um, can just try it in a safe environment in a school as a project, that would be a great factor because... Um, Yeah, once you start one business, there's so much that will be in the next business as well. You, you always have the same problems. You always have the same topics. Uh, you have to uh, go to the tax office and uh, do stuff. You have to do marketing. You have to do this. You have to find employees who are motivated. So um, I think the more students can just try it in a safe environment and they don't have to lose their own money, for example, maybe this will encor encourage them to do it uh, later on with a real business because they see, okay, there is always a way to, to deal with problems and to move on and find a way. Yeah, and I mean, that's also pretty, pretty great that you're a team of three. Like yeah. Even so, most uh, female founders in Germany 
start on their own and like yeah. then they're just on their own with yeah. their own skills but yeah. like yeah. you're in in three yeah and that kind of brings in the competence the network yeah. the yeah. skills from yeah three different and of course we are all curious to hear like was it out of co coincidence that you're like a all female team or <laughs> did it just happen um Yeah, or was it a strategic decision? Like, was it coincidence or strategic decision? Yeah. I mean, like, um, because it's um, quite rare. <laughs> yeah, um, it wasn't a strategic decision. Um, it, I would say it wasn't really on um, coincidence as well. I mean, Katja first started with the business plan. Um, initially, it was her idea and she was looking for a co-founder and then she found me and uh, we both connected very fast um, because of the topic. Um, and um, yeah, we we. Um, got along very well so that's why we decided okay let's so you do didn't it. know each other before no we like um, found each other over Founderio it's a platform um, for founders or for people who are interested in founding their own company it's a little bit like LinkedIn but very small um, and you can just um, type in the city you are in and then you can see um, people who have a profile there who are interested in um, building a company as well and um, yeah Katja um, and I always wanted to find a third person but we were definitely open to find um, a man as well um, we, we were totally open it was more like the profile we had in mind okay we want someone who is um, good in finance or um, who might have um, a technical background developing websites and so on And we had uh, a lot of meetings. We met a lot of people, um, men and women. And then um, we found a woman. And then it was <laughs> like, okay, then <laughs> great. Let's let's do it uh, as the three uh, women. Yeah. And how did you find Larissa? Like, what was the? Was it also through Fondarion? Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, also it was the through, same uh, platform. Yeah, Fondarion was um, quite funny because it was during. Um, Corona in March. So the first month we worked together, we never saw each other before. Yeah. Um, so in in, Ma in May, the first meeting, um, it was quite yeah uh, exciting <laughs> to finally see each other in person. And yeah, it was also cool to see that even without that, um, we worked very closely together from minute one. So I guess this was also a good starting point. And uh, what motivated you to like be on Foundario or like? Uh... So yeah, um, I, like I said, I always had the idea of um, founding my own business. The thing was that I never really had a good idea where I was like, okay, let's do it. Um, so one day I thought about, okay, but there might mu there must be other people that have good ideas. Um, so um, I uh, went um, to the platform and yeah, signed up there. And actually that was in January and I didn't even have like a picture or anything else about my CV. Um, but yeah, that was enough, obviously, <laughs> to, to find me. I had like my interests were fashion. So uh, maybe that's that was the connection. And I point. think e-commerce as well. And e-commerce, yeah, I that's mean, true. The platform is very small. Yeah. So I texted literally everyone who was on that platform <laughs> who was in Munich. And uh, we talked before to people who are, uh, um, aren't in Munich. But then we were like, no, okay, we have to be in the same city It's very important to be in the same space. And uh, yeah, then I texted everyone and La Larissa texted back. <laughs> Luckily and then, I was in that. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's very interesting. But it's it's hard to find um, co-founders. So I, I used uh, LinkedIn as well and Xing and posted um, th something on those platforms as well. But um, yeah, it was very hard to, to get applications for this position. Yeah, but I think that's a quite good point for like future uh, or potential entrepreneurs that it doesn't yeah. always matter just of having your own idea, yeah. but that there is like lots of people out there who yeah. already started something and yeah. might look for someone else. And maybe do you have any other like hints, recommendations, places where um, potential female founders could 
could look or go to um, anything you want to pass on to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of cool startup events and um, um, on most events, people pitch in the beginning and a lot of those pitch end with, uh, we're currently looking for a co-founder and a lot of the time when it comes to male teams, um, they uh, most of the time look for someone who does marketing or sales. And um, so, um, yeah, just go to events or use a platform like... Um, uh, Uh, Founderio, <laughs> or there are Facebook groups as well where you can connect with people who have ideas or who don't have ideas but also want to start something. We also attended, I think, last month a very cool event. Um, it was from um, Marina and it called um, M Stories and it's only for women. And it's like two times a year, mm -hmm. I think. And it was um, really cool to see because there were like, I would say... 50 to 60 women mm -hmm. and they have like panel discussions uh, for example with the founder of Langha Mädchen um, or last year there was Delia um, Fischer from West Wing or Delia La, Ch La Chance uh, <laughs> her new name um, and it was really cool to see how um, all these women really um, connected each other and um, I think also um, event types like this are very cool very, very where really women who are already doing something or um, have like the idea of doing something by their own um, can connect and um, can um, also tell their ideas and get feedback and uh, so on. So I think also, um, yeah, these events are quite cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there is quite a lot yeah. going on mm -hmm. in Munich and I don't think it's, a yeah, it's maybe just getting to know about About the stuff that's happening but there's definitely a lot of um, meetups mm -hmm. um, groups events um, yeah. especially yeah. targeted also for uh, potential female entrepreneurs yeah. Yeah. and um, and I think it's it's a quite good sign mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and maybe um, right now I think I, I read that San Francisco is still like the best place for female founders to start okay. their business and uh, Munich is like very very <laughs> you should low move at to the bottom <laughs> okay. um, and why uh, is san francisco so good for um i think uh, it's like a report um they brought out and they calculated all sorts of activities and i think it depends on like investors like mm, how much yeah. funding you can mm. get how many events like it's a whole yeah. ecosystem yeah um and they it's like a ecosystem study yeah and they measured um all different factors and i and From this ranking, San Francisco was on one of the highest places for yeah. uh, female founders. Ah, interesting. Yeah, I also yeah. think that uh, when we talk about female founders, we should always talk also talk about female investors or business angels, mm. um, because also female business angels tend to invest more than women and tend to invest in social impactful startups. And um, I think the number is even smaller. Um, if the percentage then how we how many female founders we have in Germany so it's like 10 percent I think or something like that female business angels in Germany and I also think that yeah both numbers correlate um, so I think yeah we should also um, look at this side and not only on the on the female founder side but also look at the investor side but at, because at the end um, the investor is like the ve ve vehicle um, to success yeah most of the times i think mm -hmm. Yusangu is still looking for an investor <laughs> if i'm not wrong yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah um yeah yeah we are um currently started our first funding round and are looking for an investor and it's not that easy uh, during corona um but um yeah we are in a in a good mood so mm -hmm. we are um so if anyone has a lot of money and wants to invest in a really good startup, <laughs> yeah, Yusanga is the right place to, yeah. <laughs> to right. get in touch with. So maybe, yeah, I, I think we're already running out of time. Um, but I have one final question, which is more related to maybe our products as we are here in Munich. And like, I mean, there's lots of local brands and you're sourcing them. So maybe just tell us, like, if you want, like one or two Uh, brands from Munich and how you picked them and just a bit about the process like 
uh, how local brands uh, get featured on your um, platform, on your store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or what's your favorite one? Yeah, <laughs> uh, um, we um, sell a few brands from Munich and um, all of them are uh, pretty great, I would yeah. say. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're constantly looking, sourcing for new brands and products and uh, we go to events uh, or just look through um, Instagram or um, just Google for cool new brands. And um, yeah, we um, go in a very deep discussion with every brand um, to choose if they um, fit um, with uh, their whole production process, um, if it's fair and sustainable and so on. And um, yeah, to name two brands from Munich, I would definitely name another brand. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I wanted to say. As yeah, well. it's it's a very nice brand from Munich. Um, it's female founded. Um, it's uh, two women who founded it, I think, three years ago. Um, and they do very cool sweaters and T-shirts and um, pullovers. And they produce in Portugal. And uh, they um, yet um, have uh, an eye for cool designs, I would say. It's a very uh, good running brand, in, especially in our store. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a great story. The two are very passionate and they attend Green Style every year. It's a great event here in Munich for fair and sustainable clothing. And uh, yeah. They're very nice. They support us very, very nicely. That's that's also very great. Um, yeah. Um, th as the second one, I would maybe say Jute Launa. It's a, a brand also here from Munich, and uh, she uh, produces in Spain. It's um, shoes, uh, sneakers. Uh, she also has a little store here in Munich in Schwabing. And yeah, we we work together very um, closely, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, cool, yeah. So yeah, there's lots of things happening. I mean, the small producers on the one hand, and I mean, it's great that a platform like yours kind of brings them all and features the stories yeah. um, of those little brands that yeah. one might otherwise overlook. Yeah. Um yeah I think uh, from from my side um we're kind of at the end of our little talk on uh founding maybe for the closing um you you've been um in your early stage you were also they like, coached um by the SCE and mm -hmm. that's actually where we once met just yeah. <laughs> randomly in the hallway when Morton who was your first coach from the a uh, startup center. Um, I think we just ran into each other. Yeah. And uh, this is why we're here today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, maybe can you tell us, like, how did you meet SCE and when did you decide or how did you become part of their um, coaching program? Yeah. So we just went to an event from SCE last summer. Um, it was, I think, the summer party of the incubator. And uh, at that time, we were just uh, on startup events every week, like two or three events, just to connect with the uh, with the uh, scene, just with uh, people uh, uh, of the startup scene. And uh, yeah, we um, talked to one of the coaches there, Saskia, and she um, um, just showed us around and the, um, showed us the, uh, the incubator. And we were very impressed uh, to get a free uh, um, office. And also, of course, uh, the, the whole package with the coaching, the network and so on. So we thought, yes, it's a good idea to just um, send an application. And it was definitely a great step for us because we learned a lot. Uh, it was great to connect with all of the other um, startups in the incubator. And um, yeah, we just met a lot of interesting people. And uh, we really accomplished a lot during those months because of the office. I mean, it was a great place to work. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, universities, um, it's, it's really cool that um, nowadays they have all these very easily 
accessible yeah. um, programs, yeah. um, especially in the early stages. Yeah. So if you have an idea, you can just go there yeah. and like talk to some people who have yeah. been coaching so many other startups. So it's not as sometimes one would think so different or it's, it's a quite set up process, like mm -hmm. a structured process. Um, and I think, yeah, everyone who can just uh, yeah. uh, take advantage of mm -hmm. all these free resources yeah. that are just out there. I also think that Munich is a great place for it because you have so many options because you have like this free big yeah, universities. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that's, that's very great in Munich. Mm. And it's very cool that um, the Hochschule or SCE opened the program for people who aren't part of the university or the, the Hochschule. Um, because Katja and I, we didn't, at that time when we applied, we weren't students or anything. We were just starting our company. And it was very nice that they opened this whole program. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Any final last words or otherwise, I think I would, Thank you a lot for being here and for having this first talk. It was really nice. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we will definitely follow you on either Instagram or all the social media channels that are out there. And hopefully that you find an investor mm -hmm. <laughs> sooner yes. or later yeah. and yeah. you can grow your business and make a good impact. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. It was Thanks. a pleasure being here. Yeah. Thank you. This was Five, your university podcast on female entrepreneurship. We hope that today's episode sparked your curiosity and leaves you feeling inspired and motivated to explore further. Thanks for listening and until next time.